In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate a mask from your roughness texture. And not only will I show you how to generate that mask, but also how to use that mask in Painter. And generating masks where you do not have any will allow you to have more control to change and adjust parts of the material where you need it without affecting others. And it's a very effective, very useful technique that you will find yourself constantly in need to make those material adjustments. So let's begin. Now, before we get started, I want to briefly mention that if you're looking for learning and using Substance Painter, I have an in-depth tutorial course that will show you everything you need to know to get started so you can texture your environment assets and your environment props using Substance Painter without any prior knowledge. The tutorial course is Substance Painter Essentials and it spans 23 videos and over 6 hours and it will show you how to begin texturing using Substance Painter. Now, let's get on to the tutorial. Here I have a ceramic tile texture that's being used from a base material layer. And overall it looks pretty good, but there is a problem with it where generating a mask will become very useful. So if I zoom in a little closer and get an angle, you can see that I have a problem in terms of roughness, where the tile itself looks pretty good, although it does need some roughness variation. But then the grout, the concrete here in between, also is receiving the same roughness. It's very shiny. And that concrete should not be shiny, it should be very dull. And inside this base layer, there is no controls to change the concrete roughness and then the roughness of the tile individually. There is only one roughness control, which is right here, tile roughness. So if I increase this, you can see it becomes very dull or it becomes very shiny. And it does this to the entire texture. And there are no other controls here that allows me to tweak these two settings separately. And you will experience this with many base materials, as well as any materials that you build up on your own. And to control this part, you need a mask to help occlude or to help hide the parts for the tile as well as parts for the grout or the, that concrete in between the tile. So in this method, what I could do is I can take the default original roughness, make some adjustments to the roughness texture, and then turn it into a mask to use to help me control the tile as well as the grout in between separately. So if I take a look at my roughness channel right now, I have a clear separation of black and this very dark gray. So I can use this information and adjust levels on this roughness texture to give myself black and white values for the mask to use. And actually if I even turn this up, the tile roughness, and increase this a little higher, I could use this as my mask. I do need to make some adjustments to it so it's a clear separation of black and white and not gray in between. I need pure black and I need pure white. But you can already see that this roughness texture can be used as a mask. So I'm going to bring this down to my value that I was using. So here's how to do this. I'm simply going to use this base layer and ignore the one that I already have above. This is the only one we see right now. I'm going to take the single layer that I have and I'm just going to generate textures for it. And I'm only going to export a single one that contains that roughness texture. This one right here. So I'm going to go to file and export textures. The preset does not matter as long as you can generate a roughness texture from this. So I'm going to use the Unreal Engine 4 to generate the roughness texture. Then I'm going to click over on my texture that's going to generate. And the only thing I need here is this metallic occlusion and roughness texture. And it's going to generate those three different textures packed into individual channels. And the only thing I need here is the green channel, which is roughness. So I'm going to disable everything except for the packed roughness and the occlusion and metallic. And then export. Now this method of taking your roughness texture and then generating a mask from it will not work in every situation or in every case. For example, for this texture, for this natural cinder block, if I take a look at the roughness texture, at the roughness channel, there's just not enough of black and white or grayscale visual separation for me to generate something from this. Um, I could, in certain parts it will show up pretty good for black and white separation if, if I push the levels. But on other parts right here on the bottom, you can see that it kind of blends with the cinder block itself. So no matter how far I push the levels, I will not be able to get that clear separation of black to white for the cinder block and the mortar to separate the two. So in that case, I would need to use another method to generate the mask. So just know this method of taking the roughness channel or the roughness texture and then converting it to a mask will not work in every case. You'll just have to take a look at your roughness texture to decide. Let's open up the export texture in Photoshop. And since this is a packed texture, which contains three different channels of information, for roughness, we only need the green channel. When you export using UE4 packed preset, 
Again, this also works for UE5. The roughness texture is packed inside the green channel, and it's this one right here. And that's the only one we need. So I need to take the information out of the green channel and have it as its own texture on its own canvas. I'm going to press Ctrl A to select everything. Make sure that the green channel is selected and the only one that's visible. Press Ctrl C to copy, then go to File, New. It will set the size of your clipboard of your canvas to the size of the copied image, which is 2048 by 2048, and it's correct. I'm going to make sure that the color mode is RGB, 8-bit, and I'm going to create this new document. And then I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste. And I want to make sure that it pastes into every single channel because I want to have this as its own layer. I'm not trying to pack this mask into individual channels. This is for Substance Painter to be used. So I can include the parts for tile and for grout. If I was using this for UE5, then I would pack it into its own channel. But for this, it's going to be as a single texture and the same information in every channel. Now, I could also just simply keep it as grayscale and not RGB and it will also work. And now I can go ahead and close this packed texture. And this is what we need. So for this right here, we need to control levels. I need a clear separation of black and white. A mask needs to be black and white. White will reveal and black will conceal. So I'm going to make sure that the layer is selected that I am going to do levels on. Then press Ctrl L to adjust levels. And I'm going to use these sliders. And in this case, I'm going to use the right slider, the white. And push it in until I begin to see more of white and black rather than gray. And this is where my information is right here. You see the histogram and that's where the information is. I'm going to zoom in a little closer to make sure that I don't have any noise from the roughness. So I need to push this even more. Again, I need that clear separation of black and white. That's what a mask is. And here we are. I'm going to press OK and just to double check that these are white and black values and nothing in between. I'm going to click on the color picker and just simply take a look at the white, which should be set to all Fs or RGB set to 255 and black should be all zero. And that is. So here's our mask. Again, remember, mask is black and white texture to help hide and reveal parts of another texture. In this case, it's going to be used for roughness. White will reveal, black will conceal. So because we're concealing with black, I actually need to invert this because I need these parts to be white so they are visible and black will be invisible. So to invert your mask, simply select the layer that you need to invert and then press Ctrl I. Or you can find this under Image, Adjustments, Invert. And here's our mask. Let's export this as a single image that we'll be able to import it and use in Substance Painter. Go to File, Export, Export as, Alt, Shift, Ctrl, W. I'm going to export this as PNG, no transparency, and at 2K, and export. Choose a folder where you want to export it into. I'm going to simply export it in the same folder with that pack texture. And I'm just going to keep the same name and underscore mask tiles and save it. Back in Substance Painter, let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to go ahead and delete this roughness variation layer so it's more clear. We only have our base layer, our base material. So to begin to control the grout, the in-between tile and the tile itself to have different roughness, I'm going to create a new fill layer. Let's name it roughness. For this fill layer, I only need to control roughness and nothing else. So I'm going to disable every other channel except for roughness. And let's go ahead and adjust this roughness. This is what's going to be our in-between tiles, the grout, the concrete, to be not so shiny. So let's do like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Now it affects everything right now and overrides the layer below. However, we have that mask and that's what we're going to use to occlude the parts for the tile and the parts for the concrete. So let's bring in that mask to use. I'm going to go to File, Import Resources, Add Resources, and choose that texture, that mask texture we just exported, and click Open. And I'm going to set it to Texture. I'm going to import it as a current session, so it's only going to be available for this current session of Substance Painter until it's open. And if I close it and relaunch Painter, it's no longer going to be inside the library section. However, it will still be inside my layer stack once I use it. This just saves on resources not to have them be loaded constantly inside the library. So I only need it for this layer setup. I'm going to hit import. And here it is. Again, it was very important that we inverted this and you will see why in a bit. White will reveal and black will conceal. So all the white parts are going to be adjustable using this roughness fill layer and these controls right here. That's what we're going to see. And the black parts are going to reveal the layer below. So to use this, we need a black mask because if I take this texture, this mask right now, and drag it on top, and let's say we want to apply it just to the roughness, 
you can see that it's going to apply to everything. It's actually using the mask as roughness now. Black is very shiny, white is very dull. And we are not using this as a roughness information. We need to use this as a mask. So let me undo and I'm going to create a black mask. Right click and choose a black mask on the roughness icon. And then we're going to drag this mask texture into this black mask. Another way to do this is by, let me undo this. So we have our fill roughness layer. I can add a black mask into it and then right click on the black mask and choose fill. And then inside this fill layer, you can see that we have our grayscale. We just take that mask texture and drag it into that grayscale property. And we did exactly the same thing. So you can see if I turn off the visibility for this, we essentially go back to what we had before. But because we now using a mask, we are occluding parts for the grout, for the concrete using this mask. And we are revealing the roughness parameter, which is 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So this is why I turned this up for the roughness layer for the fill layer to higher value. So this way we can turn down the shininess and make the concrete more dull. If I turn this down, you can see that I'm actually turning the value back up to make it more shiny. But setting it closer to one, I'm making it more dull. So we're using this mask to occlude the parts for roughness. And then we're using this fill layer to control the roughness to make it more shiny or more dull. And in our case, it's concrete, we're making it more dull. So this mask is now being used effectively. So if I take a look at the roughness channel and the information, here's what we had before, just with the single base layer for the material. It was actually all black, meaning it was very shiny. But now we're using its own roughness layer, using the mask to occlude the tile and reveal the concrete with this one single roughness layer. Here's what we did. We essentially created a custom mask in order to control those parts for concrete and not affect the parts for the tile. Let's go back to material. So let me give you a little bonus where you can do more with this and take the material a little further. So right now our tile is very shiny. We have the concrete thing between tiles under control and it looks much better than before, more believable, but the tile itself is very clean. So if you wanted to add roughness variation on top of everything while still maintaining the in-between tiles that has no roughness, let's go ahead into the black mask and into our fill. So this is the fill, this is the concrete in between. Let's name it right now. Mask for concrete. And now I'm going to add another fill by right clicking on the black mask. Go to fill effect into the black mask. And this is going to be our roughness variation. So with this fill effect selected, we just need to drag another texture, some kind of a grunge texture or some kind of a, a different variation of black and white. So we can introduce that variation on the tile. So let's go to textures. Let me clear this right here at the very top so we get to see everything inside the library. And I'm going to search for grunge. And then just simply use any of these black and white textures that are available inside Painter and just drag it into this grayscale property for the fill layer that you just created for the roughness variation. So here's before, here's after. However, you can see that we are applying this entire fill effect on top of everything. So we are getting back and losing our concrete in between. So all I need to do is change the roughness variation layer to a different blend mode. So I'm going to select the blend mode and I'm going to use the drop down arrow, up and down arrow to just cycle through all available blending modes right here. It's just a little quicker than having to select them one by one manually. So I'm just simply going to go down the list until I get some good variation. So this one right here, LGT, which is Lighten Max, is pretty good. So you can see if I turn this off, turn it back on, we have some roughness variation. Another good one, without me having to go through all of them, is Screen. Screen is pretty good. Uh, it kind of gives us the similar effect. And then we can push the roughness variation of this roughness effect layer even more by selecting it and controlling the balance, the contrast, as well as adjusting the opacity for that fill effect. Whilst we're still maintaining that mask from the layer below. You could invert these layers, so you, you could actually put the roughness variation layer to the bottom. Let's go back to normal, reset this back. So if you had the mask for concrete on top, you would just do the same thing by adjusting the blend modes for the mask itself and not for the roughness variation. Here's screen mode, and here is the light and max. However, if you do turn down the opacity for this layer, you can see that I'm actually turning down the opacity for the layer itself. Uh, the layer stack matters, and you would just have to make adjustments for the fill layer on top. 
So here is our kind of modified roughness variation. And we are now using a mask to occlude those concrete parts that we had a problem with. And if you don't like the roughness variation that it's using, you can simply replace it by selecting that roughness variation layer and replacing this grayscale with something else. And all the layers will remain intact and you will still occlude parts that you use the mask for. Now, when you're creating masks, you do not need to work with RGB channels. You can simply work as a grayscale image and it will also work. So here, this is RGB. However, if you simply go to image mode and work to create your masks as grayscale, and in this case, I'm not gonna flatten, and then save this as an image that you import into Substance Painter. And in this case, you will only have a single channel to work with and export it the same way as a PNG and then import it into Substance Painter the same way as we did. You can see here, I already imported this one. This is a grayscale and you can use this right here instead of the RGB mask that we did in the beginning of the video. So here I can just simply replace mask for concrete, drop it into the grayscale and it will work exactly the same way. Now that we have this mask, we can use it for other things. For example, if you want to make adjustments for parts of the texture while not affecting others. So let's say I want to affect and have the tiles to be of different color, but not affect the ground, the concrete in between. I can use the same mask to control those adjustments. So I can create a new fill layer. And in this case, let's just say I only want to work with color. I'm going to disable everything here except for color. Right now, this fill layer, if I change the color, it's affecting everything. But with that mask, I can hide parts that I don't want to be affected. So I'm going to create a black mask into this fill layer and then simply drag the mask that we imported, whether it's grayscale or the RGB, it does not matter, and drop it into the black mask. Right now it's affecting in between the concrete itself, but I can either insert a filter and invert this fill effect, or I can right click on the mask and invert this mask. And now we are affecting only the tile and not the concrete in between. So I can go ahead, select the fill layer and adjust it to any color I want thus affecting only the tiles, but not the concrete using that mask. So you can see that this mask we created can be reused over and over again for different effects and for different adjustments. And now you know how to use your roughness texture to generate a mask and then how to use that mask. Now there are going to be instances where a roughness texture cannot provide you with a good mask, but you have other methods of generating masks. I have two other tutorials that use a substance sampler to help you generate masks. One is using the base color and the other one is using a normal map. So take a look at both of those tutorials to help you generate more masks.